and welcome to Zootom Storytime. My name is Rhiannon. I'm going to be reading from Scottish Folk Tales for Children, written by Judy Patterson. Now, curry in, get comfy, because we're going to be reading The Tailor of Saddle Castle. Long ago lived the great Laird MacDonald, who was so rich that he could employ a tailor to work year-round in his castle at Saddle on the east coast of Kintyre. One day he called for the tailor because he wanted a new pair of trues. That'll be soon enough done, said the tailor. But MacDonald also made a strange request. He wanted the trues to be made at night in the old ruined abbey. For I hear the abbey is haunted by a fearsome thing seen only in the dead of night. I will pay you for the truce, but double the reward for the story you bring back. So the tailor agreed, and he cut the fabric and put together his needles and his thread, and when night came, the tailor set up off the glen to the ruined abbey, about half a mile from the castle. Inside he found a gravestone to serve as a seat, and he lit his candle, put on his thimble, and set to work on the trues, stitching and sewing, his needle shining, and all the while thinking of the handsome reward he'd collect from MacDonald. He was doing quite well, when all of a sudden he felt the ground tremble under his feet. Keeping his fingers at work, he looked about him and spied a great head rising up through the stone floor of the abbey. Do you see this great head of mine? The thing said. I see that, but I'll sew this, replied the tailor, stitching and sewing. Then the head rose higher, higher through the stone floor until its neck appeared. Do you see this great neck of mine? I see that. But I'll sew this, replied the tailor, as he stitched and sewed, stitched and sewed. The thing rose even higher still, until the great shoulders and a chest appeared above the ground. Do you see this great chest of mine? Again, the tailor replied, I see that, but I'll sew this. Still, it kept rising above the stone floor until it shook a great pair of arms in the tailor's face. Do you see these great arms of mine? I see that, but I'll sew this. And he stitched faster and faster, for he knew he had no time to lose. He began to sew with longer stitches as he watched it rising, rising, until it lifted out a leg and stamped it onto the floor. It roared, do you see this great leg of mine? Aye, aye, I see that, but I'll sew this, cried the tailor. His fingers flew with the needle and the stitches got longer and longer. He had almost finished the trues when the thing began to lift its other leg. But before the thing could pull its other leg above the stone floor, the tailor finished the trues. He blew out the candle, bundled up the trues under his arm, jumped off the gravestone and ran out the abbey. The fearsome thing gave a great howl, stamped with both its feet on the stone floor of the abbey and out of the abbey it went after the tailor. Down the glen they ran, but the tailor had a head start, a nimble pair of legs and no wish to lose the laird's reward. He ran, and the thing ran, and he ran, and it ran faster and faster. The thing howled again, but the tailor held the trues tight and let no darkness grow under his feet until he reached Saddle Castle. No sooner was he inside and the door slammed shut than the thing was upon it, grasping at the stone door jamb with great fury. The noise woke all within the castle, and they rushed down the stairs to find the tailor, white as a sheet and panting hard. He gave the trues to the laird. MacDonald never noticed how some of the stitches were somewhat long, because he was so interested in the story the ta tailor had to tell, and for this he more than doubled the reward. If you ever visit Saddle Castle, look closely at the stone door jam 
and there you will see the five finger marks left by the fearsome thing. The end.